Hi there, I'm Anton from Anton's Mindstorms Hacks. In this video, I want to show you a hack. Um, it's a long standing frustration of mine, and it's about the um, LEGO ultrasonic distance sensor. Um, I finally was able to hack around it and create a better distance sensor. What has been annoying me for years is how slow the sensor is and um, how badly it reads under an angle so if you don't point it straight at the wall um, it gets um, a very bad reading and also it cannot read soft materials so if i would point that sensor right uh, towards me uh, with my t-shirt or my sweater here it just wouldn't read it because soft materials don't reflect sound and um, together with a friend of mine steven i've been um, creating some pcbs to um, connect a laser distance sensor here to um, a, a Spike Prime robot. And um, this makes for a really, really reliable wall follower. Something that is just not possible with the default um, LEGO distance sensor. I've, in the introduction, you saw how um, accurate that was. Um, right now, let's have a look at how everything is built and um, comes together. Okay, I'm going to disassemble my construction here. Uh, so you can see how it is all built. The central part of the um, uh, new sensor is this tiny, tiny, tiny board. Um, it's a laser distance sensor um, type VL53L0X V2. And the V2 is, I think, for the, the range. So this thing reads about up to 8 meters, which is uh, pretty nice. And it's a standard one dollar i squared c sensor that i got somewhere in china and i hot glued it to a three long beam here to um, be able to connect it to my lego then this wire here is a grove breakout wire so um, let me remove this so the grove breakout wire so grove ports are a standard i squared c port and um, this connects to this board here and let me remove that board that board is a um, contains a um, ESP 8266 um, which is some kind of micro python processor or at least it runs micro python in my case you can of course run anything on it um, it's Kind of similar to what's inside the spike hub however this one has um, wi-fi so i can upload programs to it through my um, through a wi-fi web browser connection which is pretty neat and this thing is able to send and receive i squared c something that the spike prime hub isn't able to do so i'm using this as a translator to translate the I squared C signals from this distance sensor to something the Spy Prime Hub can read. Um, the nice thing is I've loaded some very nifty code on here, um, which not only reads the sensor, but also emulates the distance sensor. So I programmed the hub with uh, word blocks and word blocks thinks there is just an ordinary um, distance sensor plugged in, while in fact, it's a very nifty laser rangefinder. Now this board, um, is connected via serial port um, to the distance sensor and for that I have another PCB let me disassemble that so the two screws in the back here come out um, you need a Torx T6 screwdriver to do this um, those aren't very common um, but I happen to have one <laughs> as a hacker of course and then um, this is another PCB I created together with uh, Steven here and it breaks out the um, 0 0.05 inch headers that are inside the distance sensor to regular 0 0.1 inch headers and um, we created this board to also directly fit the um, the ESP board so we were able to um, do all the translation and stuff in between of course if you don't have such a board or don't want such a board you can r use this breakout board to do other connect other serial port UART devices so here you can see that there is a 
a volt uh, power supply of uh, three volts, a ground um, serial port you word send and receive, and you can also use the motor leads to generate voltages of uh, up to eight volt, I think. Now, um, once this thing is out, of course, we can reassemble the distance sensor like this and lock the screws in place again. And there we have it. Our distance sensor is back together. Now, <laughs> I was lazy, so I just got myself another distance sensor so I could swap them out um, quite quickly. Um, because again, um, you don't need a different program. So in the video you saw where with the wall follower, both um, situations were running the exact same program. They were just using different sensors. Now let's take a look at the um, scratch program. Scratch program is quite simple really. Um, what I do is I set the movement motors. So I use the per block then I'm setting the speed here. Um, I'm using a variable to set speed because I want to be able to um, set the speed with the left and right buttons on the hub. So when either of these buttons is pressed, I increase or decrease the speed. And um, this is the, this uh, my block here is just a fancy my block to actually reflect mm -hmm. the speed here on um, the display and um, then actually write the speed. So this isn't directly necessary for the wall follower i just thought it need then in this forever loop i start by uh, reading the distance from the distance sensor here um, and then um, i wish i could input the formula right into the steering block but i have to do some if else's um, sadly um, the thing is that if um, I'm not reading anything, so because I'm if if I'm reading a long distance, what I want to do is um, turn at a certain um, steering angle that is able to round um, 90 degree corners. Um, if that's if I'm not rounding any 90 degree corners, I can just do the normal steering calculation. Um, what this does is it tries to keep the distance um, from the wall at 45 centimeters. And if the distance is exactly 45 centimeters, this um, subtraction here will return zero and will effectively turn the steering to zero. If the um, distance is larger than 45, this will return a positive number. I'll multiply this by a um, um, f amplification factor for the steering. Uh, so to, to steer a bit stronger than just the, the difference. Um, that should have been good enough to put into the start moving steering block, but there is a problem. If you input numbers in here that are larger than 100, the steering actually decreases. So I have to manually look at the resulting number and cap it at 100 and minus 100, um, just because the capping doesn't happen very well inside this uh, pink block, sadly. Um, it's a bit of... Um, yeah, you should know uh, that thing. Um, so working around the peculiarity of the pink block makes the stack a little bigger than probably should have been necessary. Um, but all in all, this is a pretty simple program to, uh, that tries to keep the distance at 45 centimeter to the wall. And this, program's, this program works very well on accurate sensors that um, give accurate and frequent readings and it works pretty badly on a sensor that fails half the time because if the sensor fails, um, the robot just crashes into the wall. Here you can see the default distance sensor and it's really struggling to see the wall. It saw the wall for a bit, but there it fails to see the wall again, sees the wall a bit, fails. So it fails very often to um, have an accurate sensor reading of the wall here and I think a big part of the problem is that um, the angle um, with the wall is too um, steep so um, the sensor works better if it's directed more straight at the wall which is what I've done here so I um, 
change the beam a bit here and this is a pretty decent run it's slow and shaky and crashes here in a tight corner but it works okay and um, you can compare this to a the laser range finder which has a much better detection rate and um, flawlessly navigates um, the wall with obstacles here now if it's just for uh, running around the block um, both sensors perform about equally well so here you see the laser rangefinder or the time of flight sensor at medium speed um, running around my stack of bricks now I'm pumping it over up to maximum speed and it still works um, I guess it could go even faster but then I would have to add some gears uh, to the wheels um, so this is again I think very nice uh, performance it's uh, solid and fast here is the same challenge for a regular distance sensor and you can see it struggles a bit more but it um, actually completes the task quite decently so you can see very well here how the program works where um, the amount of steering is dependent on the nearness of the block so if it gets too near it steers left it gets too far it steers right um, when running around this kind of block there is a pretty big margin of error so um, even at high speeds the original distance sensor performs quite well as you can see here um, now here is a run with the original uh, distance sensor that also went uh, pretty well it's a bit slower it's a bit shakier but sometimes <laughs> this sensor just manages and um, I guess it crashes here because it uh, detected one curve too late um, I, but I like sensors to be more reliable for instance like this one you can see it drives much straighter reacts much sooner because it fails less and really smoothly follows the ball here um, as a real wall following robot uh, should do compare that to the um, multitude of crashes I had with the original distance sensor before I just couldn't get it to work uh, right most of the time here it fails to see the wall again and crashes another crash in a tight corner here tight corners are really hard to spot if you have to point the sensor more straight at the wall okay on the ESP side of things I uh, created this um, main.py file so here I have the full um, UART ESP library checked out from github and inside the projects folder there is a time of flight LPF2 emulator project so um, that's the same project as you can see here and everything from the Wi-Fi board folder is um, you can download it and upload it to the uh, Wi-Fi board now let's have a, before we upload let's have a look at the main.py file first um, I make sure to um, turn off the uh, REPL uh, in case it might be turned on because it interferes with the UART. Then I define a mode for the distance sensor. And then um, this is the serial port uh, send and receive pin that the LPF2 needs. Um, setting up the I squared C for the distance sensor and making sure that the range finder is started. Um, initializing the um, LPF2 communication. And then I enter into this loop where I continuously check if we are connected and um, if we are connected um, turn the LED off and read the time of flight sensor um, reduce the value by 4 because I seem to have an offset of 4 cm and then just send it over to the spike and sleep for 20 milliseconds so we send no more than 50 times per second and then all of this is inside a try accept loop so that I have time to close the connection here in case um, you press Ctrl C. So this is a, a pretty simple uh, main.py file and now let's have a look at the upload. Um, so the upload here I connect to the MicroPython and um, using the web REPL the password is Python by default. Now my script is already running. Um, 
but I can abort it by pressing Ctrl C and thanks to the try accept loop it cleans up neatly. Now I can choose the files here. Um, let's go here and go over to projects, this here, Wi-Fi board and then one by one I can send them over to the um, ESP Wi-Fi board. Sending and then finally sending. So now everything is sent. Um, I can reboot. I can also just go from main import everything and the script will start running. Once the script is running you will see the values from the sensor inside the Spike Prime app um, and what is interesting is that this sensor can report distances of up to 8 meters so if I would point this one into space here the user interface says it's 2 meter but the actual distance reads more like 8 meters um, I think I have to tweak the settings of the distance sensor a bit because um, right now I'm pointing it at about three or four meters away and it still reads eight meters so um, there I think I have to change some modes or something to uh, read uh, really large uh, distances but um, the cool thing is that you're not limited to the original um, distance sensor uh, two meter cap okay this concludes my video about the time of flight uh, distance sensor here I'm looking forward to seeing your projects with it. I wonder what you will do with it and what kind of robots you will build with it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, remember to subscribe and see you in the next video. Bye bye.